son of a bitch. Hey everybody, this is Matthew Movies coming at you with my review of a 2018 short film that's up on YouTube called Ramel Carter. This is an independent movie, and obviously when you're looking at an independent movie, you look at it through a little bit of a different lens because they don't have the, the budget to do necessarily everything that they would necessarily like to do. But I, I, it, when you look at it through that lens, I was really quite impressed with this movie. And that's the thing, I, I, I haven't reviewed anything in a while, but I came across this movie and I checked it out and I was actually pretty excited to, to talk to you you about it because I think it's quite quite well done. It's very very obvious that the people who made this are big fans of like the old school action movies from like the 80s and 90s because it definitely plays on a lot of those tropes. You have there's a, there's a few moments where the main character throws out some one-liners that remind me very much of the type of thing you used to see back then that's not really in vogue these days. But overall, I was quite quite impressed with it. And and that's the thing, right? So when you go into watching an independent film, you're not necessarily expecting the best, especially when, like, I've seen some action movies that are indies that I was really not happy with, and I was like, why are they even trying? Like, the people who are, who are trying to pull up these movies obviously are just not capable of it, and that was the biggest thing, like, right off the hop, when, when once the action started, I was like, holy crap, because right off the hop, okay, so the guy who's, that plays the main character, the Rambo Carter, it... it blew me away because he's a bigger dude and obviously I'm a pretty big dude myself and I can I could never pull off any of the type of things I see in, in action movies as well I'm like ah. but this guy oh I don't, like he's obviously like a trained martial artist or something and he's limber as all get out like he, the, the moves that he pulls off were impressive man like there are some fight sequences in this like, like, like there's a couple shots here or there where you could tell there's like a bit of a gap between the person's blow and the person supposedly getting hit and you know that that's not the best they're very very rare. Uh, I think that maybe I think it might have been twice I picked up on it, looking a little hanky. But like, there are some scenes where like it really looks like the guys are getting like hurt. Like there's like you know like the there's a part where the guy's like attacking the guy's arm, and it really looks like he like he might have broken it and stuff. It is was the action in this movie. I was actually quite quite blown away by, and like obviously and most of all, like the fact the guy the guy, the guy who played the main character was pulling off this stuff. I was like. Wow, man. It was really, really impressive. And I also really liked the guy who played the main character's, like, actual acting in it. I thought he was, like, he was very entertaining. I mean, he was over the top in some of the sequences, and, like, especially when he delivered his, like, one-liner and stuff like that, but it was very in keeping with the tone of this movie. It was, I think, this, this is, the, the people who made this, to me, it feels like they wanted you to have a lot of fun with it. I mean, they, they had an interesting story, and I, I, I hate giving away spoilers on, on any of my reviews, and I really, really hope the people who watch this will check out this 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 short film. I'm going to be putting a link to it in the description below, so I'm not going to give away a big big spoilers in it. But like, there's there's some twists in this thing that I I, I honestly didn't see coming, and, and and I really really enjoyed. So you can tell they they put some thought into the story, but overall, it really really felt like they really wanted you to have a great time watching it, and I and I really did. I really really enjoyed. It. And for, the, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, which I'm assuming anybody who's watching this for the first time uh, hasn't, haven't seen it, essentially the guy who plays the main character, he's just lost a loved one, he has clearly uh, got, got some skills, and he's got a wife who he uh, adores, and the wife gets taken from him, and then he has to go and, and save her, and there's all this intrigue as to the reason why the, this crime boss came in and, and kidnapped his wife, because he has this information that's worth very valuable and that he wants to get him out of there and, and you know it's very much in keeping with the kind of stories you would see in like an 80s or 90s action film but it's done really really like it, it it's really really clear that the people who who made this really liked those kinds of movies and they're playing homage to them in, in a really really fun way and don't get me wrong this movie is not perfect i mean there's there are some issues with it and one of the main issues i had with it is so the relationship between the main character and the wife i felt like just needed a bit more 
I mean, I just the they they did a good job of creating so like showing you that there was a real comfort between the two characters, and they were really at ease in in one another's company, and you could really tell that they both really really cared about one another. And one thing I thought was actually really really fun was once she got taken. It's not like she was you know cowering in the corner all scared or whatever. She seemed to in the few like after she gets taken, you don't see that much of her. But when you did see her, she was kind. Of, you could tell that she was kind of like well, you know, I'm obviously I'm not she wasn't happy to be in the situation, but she kind of had this this attitude of like, well, I know my husband's a badass though, so uh, you know, I'm not going to be completely freaked out by the situation. So I, I thought that was cool, but the, the I just I don't know, I just needed them to show a little bit more of their connection. But overall, I like I thought both actors who played the the husband and wife did a really good job of like seeming like they were really really comfortable with, with one another. Uh, I mean, what uh, right off the hop, like one of the things that I noticed about their relationship was I would have liked to have seen them like at least kiss at some point. I mean, I, I didn't need to see like some big makeout session and it was there, there's an imp implied scene where they're going off to the bedroom or whatever, but to actually see them at least like some kind of more than just like base being on top of one another in a couple and like, it's like there was the physical intimacy there, but like there, there didn't seem to be as much chemistry as I necessarily would have hoped. And I think maybe having something like that would have just added to that element. But aside from that, I thought both actors did a really, really good job in their roles and were it like really, really added a lot to the story. And, and like I said, I, I really liked her kind of the, the, her energy, like where it seemed like she wasn't necessarily completely freaked out by the situation because she knew her husband was a badass. Which was I mean, that's how I interpret it, and I really, really liked that quite a bit. But, I mean, really, at the end of the day, there was one performance above all. Like, I was super, super impressed with the guy who played Ramble Carter. I really, really liked him. And, and the wife, Samantha Carter, I thought she was really good. But by far my favorite performance, and it was the main bad guy. I thought he was excellent like there's a scene at the beginning of the movie where he's threatening somebody without actually threatening them like there's and like you could like it really came off like that's a guy you don't want to mess with like it really came off like the i mean i'm sure that the actor who played him has probably never done anything like that in real life threatening somebody uh, i don't know i don't know his life story maybe he has but i would assume he probably had but man he seemed right at home in this role like just he's like really really intimidating and like when he was there was uh, several sequences where he was talking to his henchmen and stuff where you could really really tell like this guy you know he he doesn't suffer fools and and he like i, I just really really liked his performance a lot like he and like it was it was interesting too because i felt like he could have like it was like right on that racer's edge of being like oh like over the top evil, but I, I thought he just nailed that line. Like I really, I really, really liked it. Like anytime he showed up on screen, I was in. Like I really, really dug it. I thought it was excellent. And and the interplay between the two characters. Like there's a scene where they're they're on the phone with one another. Like the the, the, the throwing lines back and forth. I really, really liked it a lot. And the other thing, like I said earlier, that the, there was several henchmen he dealt with, and that was another one of my absolute favorite aspects of, of this movie is that overall they did a really really good job of setting up the henchman like at the beginning of it you you saw that there was this, this henchman that showed up that right the first guy that Randall carter actually fights the first time i was like holy crap why did they look together fight moves and he got dispatched like relative really quickly and relatively easily and i was like oh, okay is this gonna be kind of like the putty patrol like the 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 henchmen that are kind of useless kind of deal but that it was not the case throughout the rest of the movie like almost immediately afterwards he interacts with this other guy who i really i thought was really really great like he like Ramel Carter goes and he's he clear like they're fighting back and forth and both of them had really really good moves and and then at the end when Ramel Carter is clearly like the victor the guy was still not willing to give up anything to him until Ramel Carter went a little bit further which I thought was great because it also really shows you like the the level of um, uh, control the the main bad guy Alex Riley had like I thought that aspect was really really well done and then early on in the movie they set up the the, the Alex Riley's main henchman the guy who was like basically his personal bodyguard like a former MMA champion and all this stuff and like the even like the uh, the the people who are clearly like total badasses themselves like speak about him in like these rev this reverent tone that I thought was excellent and really really set him up to be like when you when you when you had the big uh, the big fight between Rainbow Carter and him I like uh, that's the type of thing you want to do right like you want to be able to anticipate a fight I totally did with that case and then uh, then the other thing is so you had Rainbow Carter's best friend that you you only see him in like 
three scenes, I think. You see him at the beginning of the movie where the Ramel Carter first comes across Alex Riley, and then there's a scene in the middle where Ramel Carter goes to him for help, and then a scene at the end. And the guy who played him, I thought was excellent. Like he gives a he gives a, a speech at, at one part point in the movie because he like he really you know he has, has this relationship with Ramel Carter that turns out to be very very important to the the plot. Which I mean, Ramel going to him when he's in need will, will fit set up their relationship perfectly and so but, but when he gives this speech it was like very very impactful and it was it was a monologue like it was a fairly long like not don't get me wrong like, if you're not watching this you're not gonna be sitting there being like oh, five minutes with this dude talking what's going on but it, you know it was a fairly sizable the, the chunk of dialogue for any uh, actor especially like you know a little bit more of an amateur actor to be delivering and i thought he was consistent throughout i really like liked the relationship that was set up between the two the two of them him and ramel carter i really really overall i really really dug this movie now that said i do have to talk about a couple of the other issues i had with this right because, I mean, this is a review. You got to do it, right? So one of the major issues, and this is this is a, something you see in a lot of independent movies, but I really, really wish this wasn't the case with this because for the most part, I thought this was very, very well executed. Like, it was a well-directed movie. There was, there was a few issues I had here or there, but, but overall, it came across like it had a, a bigger budget than it had, clearly, but the audio was a problem throughout a lot of the movie like and not like a huge problem it's not like it took you out of the movie but like there was there was a few scenes and like when i say throughout the entire movie i don't mean like every sequence i was thinking about it but there was like a let's say like if there's 15 sequences i would think about the audio in like sequence 3 7 and 12 kind of deal right it would come up over and over again but not consistently so the odd, there was there was a lot of moments where not a lot but there was some moments where where you from going from angle to angle you could really hear like the the audio recording sounded very differently like there was more background noise or whatever which is always something that's going to kind of take me out and I obviously I'm not a filmmaker uh, I don't know exactly what they would have to do to to uh, remedy that kind of situation and and I'm sure it's very difficult on on a low budget but you know it's, it always sucks to to have that kind of show up it kind of takes you out of it a little. Bit. And then uh, there is a special effect that comes early on when someone gets shot that I honestly, it was bad. Like it was, it, it just looked bad. And I'm sure the people who made it realize it doesn't look very good, but they wanted to have the effect anyways. But like, honestly, personally for me, like I would have, uh, I would have rather just not had it, had it there. Maybe do like a reshoot of the guy getting like knocked out instead of, uh, instead of getting shot. Cause it just, it just didn't look great. And then the only other, this is a minor quibble, but it's something that, uh, that for me is, is something whenever I see it pop up in a movie, I'm like, and uh, it, there was it, it came ac it came across in two different moments. One, uh, there's a scene where a guy's looking something up on the internet, and like he's typing, and he's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and it's like you, you're watching, you're like, clearly that guy's not typing anything real. Like he's just to make to make the noise. You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't. I, it always takes me out of it when I can like anytime anybody's at a computer, and it's clear that there's. Uh, I just don't care for it. And then there was another scene where a guy goes in to go into a, a building and there's a keypad and it, you could see it was so obvious to me. And I, I, and this is the type of thing that I pick up on that I know a lot of people wouldn't necessarily pick on, but you could so tell he wasn't hitting any of the numbers. He was mi like miming that he was saying the numbers. And I'm sure that again, it was, that was a problem to do with budget because I'm sure like they were probably picking up this shot on a building that they did not have the right to be shooting in front of. And if they hit these buttons, it might've been problematic for them. But uh, again, like if you can't, for me personally, if you, if you can't do that, just then don't do it. Don't show me the, like have them going into like breaking into someone's house or I don't know, figure out another way around it where it does like for me, that that this very very briefly takes me out of the movie, which is not the type of thing I ever like to see. But overall, I really really liked this movie a lot. I was surprised, honestly, how much I liked it. I really had a fun time with it. It's about a half hour long, a little bit less, and for me, it's definitely definitely worth your time. So, like I said before, if if you have if you are are interested in independent film at all, and you're watching this, please go check it out. I got the link in the description. It, it's 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 a fun watch, and it's quick and, and it's entertaining, and you're supporting like an independent artist, which I think always is very very cool. It's kind of the whole reason why I do this series because I like to get the word out about. Uh, about uh, p uh, people's work, and, and I would love it if you went and checked it out, come back here, let me know what you thought, but, I mean, obviously that's up to you, but I would I would love that, because I think it's definitely worth a watch. So, those are my thoughts on Ramel Carter. Check it out. Really, really dug it. 
Other than that, have yourself a nice day.